Goodreads Awards. Love them or hate them, they come around every single year. And even if I don't always kind of agree with a lot of the things that end up being picked as like the popular books, I do like seeing them as a bit of a radar of what's going kind of going on and maybe also to sort of show some books that maybe I have been missed off my radar. Uh, I'm very much someone that only kind of reads a couple of genres and it's nice to kind of see other genres be recognised even if some genres have not been recognised in the last iteration. We're not going to say which ones, but you know which ones are being missed off and I'm not very impressed about it. Uh, I really hope that they kind of bring some of those categories back in the future. I have had this idea in my head for a little while now. It's a bit of a project. It's not a project that I'm going to be able to do in one video. This is going to take me multiple videos across the year, but I think it'll be really fun. And I, I kind of get to do like a little ranking thing as I go, which is always fun. My plan is that I want to read three books from every single one of the categories in the Goodreads Awards from last year. Every single genre. Yes, this does mean I'm going to be reading genres that I'm not very familiar with. I'm not going to say I'm the best person to be reading those. I don't read um, humour. I don't really read non-fiction that often unless it's something that interests me. I don't really read romance, especially contemporary romance. But... I'm genuinely intrigued about some of these books and I think it'll be really fun just to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone of always reading the same kind of books. So my plan for this, I have a couple of ground rules as well that I'm setting. So ground rule number one, if the book is part of a series then I will likely not be reading that one. I will move on to the next one in the list. Unless it's a series that I've already read or it's only kind of got like one book and it's a book I want to read. So I will take the time to read the backlog of the book. But if, for example, I know that in the Romanticu category, there are probably a couple of books that are sort of like five books deep into a series. I'm not going to read the whole series for that. No way in hell. That is one of my ground rules. My other ground rule is relating to which books I'm picking. So I'm going to kind of go through this when I do my actual picks for the video, which um, you will see recently. This is going to be my first video and I'll be reading uh, two of the categories in this video. You will find out soon exactly which. So my goal for this is I ideally want to read the winner, the runner up, and then I'm going to allow myself to pick one more book which is not in any sort of placement in particular, it's just one that I'm really intrigued by. Um, because sometimes I think the winners I don't really care that much about and there's a book that's a lot lower down that I'm like, oh, well, that sounds really interesting to me. Um, so that's what I want to read. Um, so that is what I'm aiming to do. So if I just look at the fiction, for example, that means that thankfully for this one, I have not read any of the top three. So I will um, be reading Yellow Face, which was the winner, Hello Beautiful, which was the runner-up, and The Wishing Game. I am accidentally reading the top three in this one, but um, that's only because I really want to read The Wishing Game. I was actually very tempted as well by some others. Shark Heart was really tempting, Big Swiss was really tempting, but I've, I think I will probably most likely like The Wishing Game. So I decided to go for that one as my third choice. So when there is a category that I have read the top books, however, so I know for a fact Romanticy, I've read Fourth Wing and I've read Assistant to the Villain. They are the top and that is the runner-up. So my aim for that then is that I'm going to be reading ideally like the next two in the ranking or at least the next one in the ranking and then I'm just going to be picking two others that I think are interesting. So I'm trying to keep it in terms of we're reading the top two as long as it's not part of a whole series but it might get a little bit flaky in those ones where I've kind of already read the books. There's a lot that I haven't read in this thankfully so it shouldn't be too many of the categories that I'll be having to get a bit loosey-goosey with it. So I think that is my main rules for how I'm going to be doing this. I'm mostly going to just be doing two categories a month with the exception that one month I will be reading uh, one extra category because there is unfortunately 15 categories I believe which is not an even number. I may end up just doing that as a whole separate video but I think it might just get squashed into 
one of the other monthly ones. So this is something that I'm going to be reading these monthly. I'm going to um, well, I'm not going to pick the categories because something has picked them for me but I'm going to be ideally reading those two categories in the month I'm going to be vlogging my experience of it and then I'll do a little summary at the end where I'm basically going to kind of give like my thoughts on what I personally feel like is the better in terms of ranking you know full disclosure this is just my opinion um you know I just think it'd be a fun a fun little thing to do basically. So how I ended up picking these categories and which order I was going to, the only thing I let myself stick to a certain month was I wanted to put the horror category in October because it's Halloween. So I obviously want to try and read horror books in that month anyway. I'll probably end up doing uh, Becca's Spookopolathon again this year. So just to make it easier for myself, I put horror into that category. And then what I've done for every other single month is I've used a random generator to determine which two genres I'm reading each month. I mostly tried to keep the order of how I put them in the calendar as to what order that I did them in, but this may shift around um, due to most of the fact that a lot of these books I'm taking out from the library and hauls can sometimes be a little bit difficult to get a hold of. Um, sometimes you're waiting a while for some of these books. A lot of these books, because they only came out last year and they're really popular, are in high demand at the library. So I may end up swapping some of these categories around depending on what happens basically with that. Some of these I do have physically, but a lot of them I will be taking out from the library because I'm not spending a whole bunch of money on this project, that's just for fun. Um, I'm only gonna be buying ones that I genuinely think I'm gonna love. So here is the random generator and we're gonna find out what our very first genre is. I believe this is probably what I'm going to be reading in this video. So let's see what we get. Uh, oh, okay. Romanticy is the first one. Very interesting. Okay, uh, so that is our first genre. Now let's find out what we are going to be pairing it with. Okay, here we go. Romanticy and is it going to be fiction or historical fiction? Fiction! Okay, interesting. So I feel like that is actually a very good mix, to be honest, because I don't know if I'm going to enjoy the romanticy. I've read two of the romanticy books in the category already. One I loved, one I loafed. So I feel like having something like the fiction category, which is generally literary novels, are going to be a good balancing act because I feel like the literary novels are going to be more serious and the romanticy are going to be a bit more silly. So yeah, that is not bad for the first time. Okay, round two. Let's see what we're going to get for... So I've removed those other two from it. Uh, ooh, YA fantasy. Okay. Okay, interesting. I really hope I don't get the other YA one in this one. Or um, just so you know, I've not actually put fantasy in this because I'm just putting it wherever. Um, because it's going to be the chunkiest category for me. Okay, here we go. Uh, ooh, nonfiction. Okay, again, that's actually a really good of mix because a YA fantasy is going to be quite light and breezy I think whereas non-fiction is not so yeah happy with that one I've gotta say that is not a bad mix of genres okay round three here we go we've still got quite a lot of scary genres to come uh oh is this gonna be mystery and thriller okay cool so that is our first that is uh what we're reading and then let's find out what we're pairing with it we are pairing, don't be anything too chunky, oh, memoir and autobiography, not the worst, not the worst, I'll say that, uh, they can be chunky but I feel like they can also be light reads, so yeah, not the worst. Okay, moving on to round four, we're getting a lot smaller now in the wheel, ooh, humour, humour? humor okay yeah this this is the category i'm dreading a little bit because i find comedy so subjective and i don't have a clue any of these books i'm gonna find funny um so i kind of want something more serious to balance it out 
historical fiction. I'll take that. That is generally kind of in the literary kind of sense. Um, so I'm not mad about that. Okay, so for the next month, let's see where we're going with this. I accidentally pushed the button a bit too fat too late with recording, but we have sci-fi as our first category. So now let us find out exactly what we're going to be pairing with it um something light i want to say something light Ooh, romance okay cool again very opposite combination so i'm very intrigued to see how that's going to turn out to be honest so we are down to our last four which is why fiction fantasy debut novel and history and biography um, so one of these is going to be a free and then one of these is going to be what i pair with my horror so i think i'm gonna roll and see what I get for horror. So let's do this. Ooh, ooh, okay, debut novel, not bad. So yeah, we're gonna be pairing horror with debut novel, very nice. So now on to, this is gonna be the last month. Um, I've got three left here, YA fiction, history and biography and fantasy. Um, I'm not necessarily gonna put fantasy with these three, but we're gonna, I, I just realized this is stupid because that means that those two are together basically but you know just for the sake of it let's just roll and see where we are fantasy oh no 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 oh that was just over the line ya fiction um and this is seems very counterproductive um but uh yeah history and biography um it didn't even land on fantasy um so yeah that means that those two are gonna be the last ones and then for fantasy i'm probably just gonna stick it wherever i can um looking at these now i'm gonna go over it and we'll see what looks best but we have what i'm going to be doing for this video for june we're going to be doing fiction versus romanticy for july like i said i'm not going to necessarily pin these to months but this is just kind of like a work in progress but we've also then got YA fiction versus history and biography. We have YA fantasy versus non-fiction. We have mystery and thrillers versus memoirs and autobiography. Horror and debut novel. Humour versus historical fiction. And finally, sci-fi versus romance. Looking at those, I want to say I might stick the fantasy in with the mystery thriller memoir autobiography because i feel like both of those are gonna be quick reads and fantasy is obviously gonna be a lot chunkier so i think that's probably where i'm gonna stick it in but we'll see how it goes and i may end up putting it in earlier or later depending on how crazy my reading life gets those are the picks um uh, now i guess we get to go into the meat of this actual video we get to have a look at what we're going to be reading for fiction versus romanticity Okay, so I've kind of gone over what my whole plan is for this. Now we get to have a look at the two that we've picked and we're going to pick the books um, for them. So uh, to start with, we are going with fiction. So let's have a look at what our options are. Right away, I can tell that I'm going to be reading the winner because I haven't read it yet. And it's one I also really want to read. Um, so I'm definitely going to be reading Yellow Face by R.F. Kwong. This is kind of like a, it's not a satire, well it's a satire, but it's kind of um, critiquing the publishing industry um, and also about um, race and tokenism. Really interesting book. have been wanting to get to it for a while, honestly. So this is perfect timing for me to be doing this. God, it really did wipe as well. Look at that. It got 200,722 votes out of like 587. It got like over a third of the votes. That is absolutely crazy. But yeah, looking forward to reading that. Uh, so let's have a look. The sequel, um, the sequel, sorry, the runners up is Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. Uh, don't know a whole lot about it. So let's go have a quick look. Um, 60,000 votes and I've not read it so that means I am going to be reading it unless there's anything about it that puts me off. So it is an emotionally laid and engrossing story of a family that asks can love make a broken person whole? So it looks like it's a family drama which I'm okay with. So it's about a man called William who lives in a house silenced by tragedy. He has skills at basketball which earns him a place uh 
at a college away from home where he meets a woman called Julia Padovano. Oh, and it's about her. So it's about her family. Okay. This is where Julia comes, her family. She is inseparable from her three younger sisters, Sylvie the dreamer, Cecilia, the family's artist, and Emmeline, who patiently takes care of them all. And they kind of adopt him, I guess, but then something about his past kind of comes into it and threatens to, like, ruin it all, basically. Um, so yeah, that sounds really interesting. Um, not something I would definitely have picked up, I don't think. Um, oh, apparently it was the 100th Oprah Book Club pick, so that's interesting. I'll give it a try. I don't know if it's going to be my kind of thing, but I'm going to try it. Uh, now we get to pick what is going to be my, like, the one I'm interested in. And crazily, it might just be the third one here because I've wanted to read The Wishing Game for a long time. Um, it's actually got some fantasy elements into it. So I feel like I'm cheating here a little bit by including it. But let's have a look at it anyway. So it's by Meg Schaffer. It's classed as a, oh, fiction fantasy romance. Okay. So it's about a woman called Lucy Hart. Um, oh, she's a 26 year old teacher's aide. She grew up lonely, but found her solace in books, namely a specific series by an author. She sh wants to share her love of reading with her students. Uh, oh, she wants to adopt a child, but it seems impossible because she doesn't have enough money or stability. And then it turns out that the author that wrote her favourite series has written, like, a new book, and he's holding a contest for someone basically to come to his home. Well, a group of people have been to come to his home um, and win the one and only copy of the book. So, yeah, it's, it's like a magical competition, it sounds like. That sounds really interesting. Um, I realise this, I feel like this is the first time I've properly read that synopsis. I, I just saw the cover, loved it, and heard everyone talking about how amazing it was. So that's probably my pick, um, but let's have a look at the others. Tom Lake, love the cover for this. I know it's some kind of family drama, though, set during the pandemic. I'm not sure I'm down for that, especially if I'm already reading Hello Beautiful. It's a five-star weekend. This is a bad cover. I would not have classed this as being, like, a best fiction book. Um, oh, there we go. It's class as chocolate. It's about four different friends who spend a weekend together in Nantucket. Okay. Someone else's shoes. This looks like a romance. Well, let's just open all of these up because I'm going to have a little look at them all. Just at a first glance, the other ones that I'm intrigued by are Big Swiss, Shark Heart, Burnham Wood, possibly. I think that might be it in terms of the ones that I automatically know I'm interested in. But let's have a little look at them all because there might be something else here that kind of intrigues me. Flash of irony, I just literally saw someone about to read Evil Eye earlier today on booktube. Okay, so we have all of the tabs open. Uh, I've already apparently got a couple of these on my TBR, so I'll mostly be picking from that. But let's have a look. Uh, someone else's shoes. It is a romance about making the most of second chances. Oh, okay. They, someone accidentally takes someone else's gym bag and mishaps happen, I guess. Yeah, she accidentally steals someone else's shoes or loses her shoes or something. So yeah, not, not anything I'm too impressed by. I uh, love the cover of this one, though. The Invisible Hour by Alan Hoffman. It's a historical fiction. Magical realism fantasy. Oh, it's about time travel. One June day when Mia Jacob can no longer see a way to survive, the power of word saves her. The Scarlet... Re oh, it's about the Scarlet Letter. Um, seems to tell the story of her life. Uh, oh, she lives in a cult. Interesting. Oh, okay, so this is about... This is about a girl who lives in a cult and about, I assume, her trying to break away from the cult. That actually sounds quite interesting. I'm quite into cult stories. Um, that's a, that's a contender. We're gonna keep that up. That's definitely a contender. Mame, I've heard a lot about. Uh, Mame, it's pronounced as actually, but it means woman apparently in Twi, which I think is um, African. So it's about a woman called Maddie who lives in London, but her mother spends her time in Ghana. Um, and she has to look after her father, who is suffering from advanced stage Parkinson's. Um, it looks like a lot about race, essentially. Um, she's tired of always being the only black person at every meeting. Uh, her mum comes back home, so she finally gets the chance to get away from like her responsibilities, essentially, and 
do stuff, I guess. So yeah, sounds interesting. The Collected Regrets of Clover by Miki Brammer. This is a contemporary romance. Wow, that's that's a premise. From the day she watched her kindergarten teacher drop dead during a dramatic telling of Peter Rabbit, Clover Brooks has felt a stronger connection with the dying than she has with the living. So she is a, a deaf doula? Deaf doula? This isn't fantasy, so that's an actual job. She ushers people peacefully through their end of life process. Okay, fair enough. So this is basically a book about death. And also apparently a love story. Yeah, no, I don't want to read about death right now. So it does sound interesting, but not right now. Okay, Pineapple Street. It's a contemporary... It's classed as contemporary and historical fiction. So I'm guessing we're switching back and forth in time. Um, it's about Dali, the eldest daughter in a well-connected Stockton family. She's a mother, but she gave up too much to be a mother. It's also about someone called Sasha, who married into... Oh, this is like a someone from the... Someone in the present, someone in the past kind of thing, and I guess how they're related. Yeah, no, not, not feeling that. Big Swiss. So this one sounds funny. Um, essentially this is about, um, I actually know the premise for this one, this is about somebody who is kind of like a, um, like a typist for a therapist or something, um, she, and she kind of falls in love with this really crazy woman, um, as in crazy as in, like, she tells ridiculous stories, I believe. Greta, who's the main character, calls her Big Swiss because she is tall and she is from Switzerland, um, and she kind of become really obsessed with her, essentially. Very interested in that one, not gonna lie. Uh, Shark Heart, um, this is about a man who becomes a shark. That's all I know about it, it's all I need to know. Um, apparently it's a love story. Definitely a nomination, <laughs> definitely what I'm considering. Evil Eye uh, is about a Palestinian American woman and from what I remember from what someone said earlier, essentially she worries that like it's evil eyes on the family. Oh, okay, it's got stuff to do with racism apparently as well. Um, oh, she's put on probation at work and must attend mandatory counselling to keep her position. Her mother blames a family curse for the trouble she's facing and while Yara doesn't really believe in all superstitions, she still finds herself growing increasingly uneasy with her mother's warning and the possibility of falling victim to the same mistakes. Does sound interesting, not gonna lie, but I don't think I'm gonna pick it. The Celebrants is basically about a group of friends who are having a reunion. The amount of times I've seen this cover and I thought they're on a ship, I only just realised now that they're not. They're actually just in like a nice house on the balcony um, near the ocean. It's by the same author of The Gunkel, which is something I do want to read. Oh, they're sitting, someone is sitting on a secret apparently. So yeah, it sounds interesting, but honestly, it's not blowing me away. Burn on Wood is one I've been seeing around quite a lot. Um, it gives me horror vibes, to be honest, um, from this. It is apparently a mystery thriller. Someone found a gorilla garden, oh, someone founded a gorilla gardening group in, they're called Burn and Wood apparently. They plant crops where no one will notice, but they're struggling. I don't really know what this is about, but I guess it is about a fight over this land i think so yeah and and this guy oh okay so burnham wood is it like a place essentially and the guy who owns the land says that he couldn't work she could work on the land but it's very sus so yeah i don't know i'm not feeling it connelly's county down a contemporary romance it is about a woman who is released from prison after serving time for a drug charge and is trying to rebuild her life. Ooh, that's that's rough. Also, she has a brother who's a single dad and has a brain injury. Life becomes more complicated when the cop who put her in prison keeps showing up unannounced, leaving Tara to wonder what he wants from her now. That sounds depressing and I'm not in the mood for that. Okay, The Bee Sting. Apparently it is a uh, St. Island. It is about a family in Ireland. They once ran a car business but it went under and the father is spending his days in the woods building an apocalypse proof bunker um, rather than facing life essentially. Um, his wife is selling off her jewellery on eBay while their teenage daughter 
used to be top of her class, but now is determined to binge drink her way through her final exams. And 12-year-old PJ is putting the final touches to his grand plan to run away from home. No, that sounds depressing. Goodbye. Wellness. Some book about marriage and health and happiness set in the 90s Chicago art scene. It's about two people who are college students, Jack and Elizabeth. They meet in the 90s. Oh, let me go forward 20 years to present day when they're married. Alongside the challenges of parenting, they encounter cults disguised as mindfulness support groups, polyamorous would-be suitors, Facebook wars, and something called love potion number nine. (laughs) Um, that sounds quite interesting, (laughs) not gonna lie. It sounds kind of crazy. Okay, we're considering it. Last two, we've got blackouts, which is about lost histories. Out in the desert, in a place called the palace, a young man tends to a dying soul, someone he once knew briefly, but who has haunted the edges of his life. Queer, which we love. It sounds like this guy is kind of telling him stories. It's all about oral history. Does sound interesting, not gonna lie. I don't like the cover, but it's definitely um, striking. Okay, last one. Family Meal. This is giving me Sally Rooney vibes. Apparently it's queer as well, so it's a shame that the queer ones are right down the bottom of the list here in terms of uh, score. Cam is living in Los Angeles and falling apart after the love of his life has died. Oh, this is going to be depressing again. Kai's ghost won't leave Cam alone. His spectra visits wild, tender and unexpected. Uh, Cam returns to his hometown, meets his former best friend who runs a bakery. And they're trying to reconnect, I guess? I don't know if this becomes like a romance between the two of them or if it's just about two friends reconnecting. Actually, it does sound all right, even though it's like it's depressing. I think one I will actually check out in the future. But even though I'm I'm quite tempted by the invisible hour, Big Swiss and Shark Heart definitely caught my eye. I am intrigued by Burnham Wood. And Wellness and Blackouts is kind of... I'm going to just add those to my TBR because I'm interested enough to want to pick those up now. But I think we're going to go with this top three. Just because I've been wanting to read The Wishing Game for so damn long. And this is a perfect excuse to finally read it. Um, Kristen, if you're watching... I'm finally reading it. So yeah, those are the three. Um, I am going to put holds on these in the library and I'll check back in to you when I get them. Okay, so those are my fiction picks. Excited to get to those, but now I need to pick my romanticy picks. So this one's going to be interesting because I've already read the winner and the runner-up. Um, I gave Fourth Wing five stars, really enjoyed it, and then I quite recently read Assistant to the Villain, which I really didn't enjoy. I gave it two stars. So, to pick the next one, this is where it gets awkward. So, The Ashes and The Star Cursed King is a sequel, so I'm not going to pick in that. A Soul of Ash and Blood is like book five in a series, I'm not going to be reading that. Zodiac Academy, um, not only is it a series I really don't want to read because I'm not, I don't like the whole Bolly romance kind of thing. It's book eight in a series. So that means that the next one I can possibly read is Throne of the Fallen by Kerry Maniscalco. And I actually have a copy of this already. So that's very handy. So this one is about, um, let's have a look about it. It says, The Prince of Envy has never claimed to be a saint, but when a cryptic note arrives signaling the beginning of a deadly game, He knows it will take more than a hint of sin to win and save his falling demon court. Riddles, hexed objects, anonymous players, nothing will stand in his way, though none of his meticulous plans prepare him for her, the frustrating artist who ignites his sin like no other. The trouble with scoundrels and blackguards is that they haven't a modicum of honour, a fact Miss Camilla Antonius learns after one desperate mistake allows Waverly Green's most notorious rake to blackmail her. To avoid a ruinous scandal, Camilla is forced to enter a devil's bargain with Envy, little expecting his game will awaken her true nature. Together, Envy and Camilla must embark on a perilous journey through the underworld, from glittering demon courts to the sultry vampire realm and beyond, while trying to avoid the most dangerous trap of all, falling in love. Okay, so I kind of like what the premise is for this. I like that they're going on a journey together through like the underworld that's kind of cool like I like that more than just uh, they're stuck in like you know his castle or you know just their own um, environment I I like that it looks like they're kind of both out of place 
Um, this is a Prince of Sin series, apparently. I think the second book is due to come out, yeah, later this year, Throne of Secrets. So, yeah, I think this is going to be my first pick. Um, I have actually heard really good things about this, so I'm kind of hoping I will like it. Let's have a look at my other two options. So, The Hurricane Wars, I'm honestly just kind of dubious about because I don't know if it's going to be for me. I know this is kind of like, it's based around like Raylo, so, and I've heard it described as like a, a Star Wars fan fiction, and I do like Star Wars, but I'm not really into Raylo. I don't have an issue with Raylo, but I, I'm not one of those people that's like, that is my reason for reading this book, and I feel like it is that for a lot of people. So I don't think I'm going to pick this one. Um, I've heard very mixed things about it, to be honest, and it might be one I try, but it's also really chunky. It's like almost 500 pages. Um, let's just read what it's about. All Talazin has ever known as the Hurricane Wars. Growing up an orphan in a nation under siege by the ruthless Night Emperor, Talazin has found her family among the soldiers who fight for freedom. But she is hiding a deadly secret. Light magic curses through her veins, a blazing power believed to have been wiped out years ago that can cut through the Night Empire's shadows. So I see you've got like, the dark and the light side of the force, I get it. In Prince Alaric, the Emperor's only son and heir, has been forged into a weapon by his father. Tasked with obliterating any threats to the Night Empire's rule with the strength of his armies and mighty shadow magic, Alaric has never been bested. That is until he sees Talazin burning brightly on the battlefield with the magic that killed his grandfather, turning his father into a monster and ignited the Hurricane Wars. In a clash of light and dark, their powers merge and create a force the likes of which has never been seen. It sounds okay, but honestly, I don't think I'm vibing. So I have had a look at all of these, basically. God, it, it annoys me how similar all these covers look. It's, it's so frustrating. Part of me refuses, almost wants to refuse to even pick any of these ones down here because I'm just like, they all look the same. Oh, this one is a standalone, though. The Hanging City. I like how it looks. Oh, this is the troll romance. Okay. I'm intrigued by this because I've never seen a troll done before in a romance. <laughs> And that alone makes me want to try it out. Seven years on from the run from her abusive father and with no hope of sanctuary among the dwindling pockets of human civilization, Lark is out of options. Her only leverage is a cursed power. She can thrust fear into others, leaving all threats fleeing in terror. It's a means of survival as she searches for a place to call home. If the campfire myths of her childhood are true, Lark's sole chance for refuge could lie in Kagmar, the city of trolls, a brutal species and the sworn enemies of humanity. Valuing combat prowess, the Troll High Council is intrigued. Lark could be much more useful than the low-caste humans who merely labour in Kagma. Her gift makes her invaluable as a monster slayer to fight off the unspeakable creatures that torment the Troll's hanging city suspended from a bridge over an endless dark canyon. Lark will do anything to make Kagma her home, but her new role comes with a caveat. Use her power against a Troll and she'll be killed. Her loyalty is quickly put to the test when she draws the hatred of a powerful troll who loathes humankind. Still, she finds unexpected friendship in the city and even more surprisingly love. But if everything else doesn't undo her, being caught in the arms of a troll surely will. Now in the fight for her life, Locke has a lot to learn about her past, about trust and hope when all seems lost, and above all about the extraordinary power of fear itself. Yeah, I'm kind of vibing with that, I think. That might be my second choice. There seems so many like fays and vampires and elves and all this kind of thing. And I'm like a troll. That's new. Okay. Uh, then we've got yet another Jennifer L. Armin true. Uh, fur book in a series. So we're not going there. Ooh, Jacid hair. This was the one I kind of wanted to win, even though I haven't read it. But I've heard good things about it. And it's Egyptian, which is really interesting to me. Ten years ago, the kingdom of Jass had burned. Its magic outlawed, its royal family murdered down to the last child. At least that's what Sylvia wants people to believe. The lost heir of Jass said Sylvia never wants to be found. She can't think about how Nizal's armies laid waste to her kingdom and continue to hunt its people. Not if she wants to stay alive. But when Aaron, the Nizal heir, tracks a group of Jassadi rebels to her village, staying one step ahead of death gets trickier. In a moment of anger, Sylvia's magic is exposed, capturing Aaron's attention. Now to save her life, Sylvia will have to make a deal with her greatest enemy. If she helps him lure the rebels, she'll escape persecution. A deadly game begins. Sylvia can't let Aaron discover her identity, even as hatred shifts into something more. Soon Sylvia will have to choose between the life she wants and the one she left behind. The Scorched Kingdom is rising and it needs a queen. Okay, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. It, it still sounds a little bit what I expect 
from these kind of romanticy plots, but the Egyptian setting does really interest me. So I think that's a good contender. Uh, well, we really drop down from the votes here. Like it gets like nine thousand, then we suddenly drop down to three thousand. Um, this is the Scarlet Saint Clair's Hades saga, which I do want to read, but this is the third book, so. I'm not doing it. Fox Skull of King. This is one I'm quite interested in, actually. It also has a sequel either just come out or it's coming out this year. It's about a young woman's secret power to raise the dead, which plunges her into the dangerous and glamorous world of the sainted king's royal court. When Law was 13, she escaped a cult in the catacombs beneath the city of Della, and in the ten years since, she's lived by one rule, don't let them find you. Easier said than done when her death magic ties her to the city. Mortem, the magic born from death, very well named there I guess, is a high price and illicit commodity in Delair, and Law's job running poisons keeps her in food, shelter and relative security. But when a run goes wrong and Law's power is revealed, she's taken by the Prescomort, a group of warrior monks sanctioned to use Mortem working for the sainted king. Law fully expects a pyre, but King August has a different plan. Entire villages on the outskirts of the country have been dying overnight, seemingly at random. Ooh, there's a mystery then. Law can either use her magic to find out what's happening and who in the king's court is responsible or die. Law is thrust into the sainted king's glittering court where no one can be believed and even fewer can be trusted. Guarded by Gabriel, a duke turned monk, and continually running up against Bastion, August's never do well hair, Law tangles in politics, religion, and forbidden romance as she attempts to navigate a debauched and opulent society. Okay, so I see Love Triangle. I see the whole. She's having to try and work out who the like the mole is essentially, who is the the person that is betraying the king. I like the idea of death magic, and I think it's got good reviews. So that's a contender. The Coven, start of a new series. I've never heard of this before in my life. Raised to be my father's weapon against the Coven that took away his sister and birthright. I do want to protect my younger brother from suffering the same fate. She has to go to a university to learn magic oh no it's a romance with the headmaster that's just icky don't tell me that this this book ends in a cliffhanger that doesn't make me want to read it okay so this is kind of doing the, the gothic dark academia thing but i'm kind of out straight away because it's a romance with a teacher so no yet another jennifer l armantrue this is a new book by her apparently um but I don't think I want to start, I, I want to try her, don't get me wrong, because she's very popular, but I'd rather start one of her other series rather than whatever this new series is. Bewitched, I've heard of Laura Falassa before. Couldn't tell you what she's done, but I've heard of her. In fact, let's just, just go and, she, oh, 41 books, Jesus. Okay, she's, she's written a lot. Oh, Rhapsodic. This book is like available for free on Audible, I remember. Um... Yeah, okay, she writes a lot of romance, so I think it is her vibe. Age 20, Cillian Bowers desperately hopes to be accepted into Henbane Coven, an ac academy for young witches. Since one of the requirements for entry is to connect with her powers via a quest through the wilderness, Cillian books a trip to South America. When a nefarious supernatural force tries to drag her plane from the sky, Cillian's magic awakens to save her life at a cost. Ooh, using her powers devours her memories. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I like that. When Selene braves the jungle and discovers the source of the attack, she finds herself awakening an ancient evil, Memnon the Cursed, who mistakes Selene for his long-dead wife. Oh, this is just the mummy now. The wife who betrayed him. Yeah, this is the mummy. Selene managed to escape and begin her studies, but then he shows up, kills a lot of witches. This is giving me way too much information. See, I like the first half of this. I'm not sure I'm liking the second half of this. I'm also failing... Oh, okay, I was going to say, how, how is she attracted to this guy? Because he sounds awful, but apparently she needs his help for answers because uh, the whole thing with her memory loss means that she isn't, like, uh, no one can trust her words. So I, I guess? I don't know, I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of red flags with that one. We're slaying the Vampire Conqueror. Not going to lie, I think this is going to be trash, but I kind of want to read it just based off the cover. <laughs> Mortal enemies to monster lovers. Okay. Okay, so we're following a girl called Selena. She's sacrificing everything for the goddess, including her eyes. Oh, and then she becomes an assassin, determined to overthrow the king, but when a brutal vampire conqueror arrives on the shores, 
Selena faces an even deadlier adversary. She's tasked with a crucial mission. Infiltrate his army, earn his trust, and kill him. This sounds really cheesy. <laughs> this sounds like a fan fiction. I'm not gonna lie. Like, the whole, oh my god, she's the chosen one. Look how special she is. She's even blind. And she can still kill anybody. So, she becomes the vampire seer? apparently. So I guess she's kind of pretending she's on his side. She likes him, I guess. I guess that's kind of it. I still kind of want to read this, but I think this is going to be a guilty pleasure read if I do indeed like it, so I'm not going to risk that for this. Okay, on to the last four, which all look exactly the same. Also, how many Jennifer L. Armentry books? we got one, two, three. That's insane. Oh, and Carissa Broadbent is on here twice, I think as well. Yeah, she wrote that vampire one, and she wrote um, this Crowns of Neaxia one. Insane. Okay, let's see what these are. Rule of the Aurora King. Is this a Sleeping Beauty? Oh, this is a sequel. So I'm automatically not going to read this. It's a fae thing. Queen of Thieves and Chaos, book three. Never mind. A Court This Cruel and Lovely is a first book in a series. So we'll take a look at that. And just to check, A Dawn of Onyx. Oh, it's also a first book. Okay, let's have a look at them. They are very much the last, so unless their premises really appeal to me, I doubt I'm picking them. Uh, oh, it's a fey one. Should have guessed with that title. For years when I fell asleep, I dreamed of a man with blazing green eyes and a cruel smile. I've already lost interest. Blah, 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 blah. Forbidden power is discovered, forced to flee. To survive, I make a desperate bargain. Ruthless mercenary. Guess he's hot. Yeah, no, I'm out. <laughs> a Dawn of Onyx. Another fae romance. Oh, and she's called Arwen. How original. Arwen Valendale never expected to breathe the fae brave one, offering her life to save her brothers. Oh, she's Katniss Everdeen. Taken prisoner by the most dangerous kingdom, made to use her rare magical abilities to heal. Why is it always that the main character is like a woman who is ordinary but she has magic so they're gonna use her? Arwen knows better than to face the ancient wicked woods that surround the castle on her own. Oh, she has to work with a prisoner to get out. Unfortunately, he's infuriating and probably hot. So I guess she's just trying to escape this court. Doesn't sound as bad as the other one. I'll give it that. Um, this one sounds like it could be a bit more interesting. But yeah, I think I'm gonna read Throne of the Fallen. I just want to see what the troll thing is, honestly. I'm sold on this because of the troll. And then it's either going to be Jasset Hair or the Foxglove King. I think I'm... I already have the Jasset Hair. So I think I'm going to try that one. But if I'm not vibing with any of these, then I'll put in the Foxglove King, I think, as, like, an extra option to swap in. So yeah, I think that is my three choices. Hello, so I'm coming out with an update because I have all the books that I'm reading for this video now. About half of these are from the library, so I had to wait for them to come in, and thankfully they did all come in in time, so I'm a little bit early, unfortunately, so I'm gonna have to speed read them, I think. But yeah, here they all are. They are. This is the TBR for the video, so let me just go through them all quickly. So we have Yellowface. Uh, this has a redonkulous number of reserves on it. So I'm going to have to read this fast and take it back. Look how many reserves it currently has on it. Absolutely insane. It just goes to show how popular this book is though. But yeah, really excited to get to it. Honestly, I think it's going to be quite a quick read. I've never read Art of Quan before, so I'm really excited to. It's about 300 pages, so the text isn't massive but I do think it's gonna be a very quick read I think it seems like the kind of book that once I start it I'm gonna be like super into it and that'll be that I'll just like blast through it hello beautiful this was the one that took absolutely ages to come in I wasn't sure if it was gonna come in or not to be honest and unfortunately this also has a large number of reserves on it and it's actually quite a bit early that I have to take it back than the other books so I will be starting this, I think, physically via the book. But I also have the um, the audio on BorrowBox. So I'm probably going to be kind of reading in tandem a little bit and switching to the audio about halfway through. This is not as thick as I thought it was going to be, thank God. I really thought it was going to be a massive tome. But fun fact, I didn't know this. Apparently it was the 100th Oprah Book Club pick. So 
that's a thing. This is not one I think I don't know if I'm gonna like this one or not. But I am interested in reading like a family saga kind of thing. So yeah, we'll still see. I don't think this this again is not as massive as I thought it was. It's just under 400 pages, I think. But yeah, we'll see how I go with this one. And then the last one is one that I actually already did own physically. I bought this a few months ago just because I really think it's going to be one I love. And that is The Wishing Game. Again, it's not massive. So I think this might also be quite a quick read. It is just under 300 pages, damn. So yeah, really excited to get to this one. I think it's probably going to be perfectly up my alley. So those are the free fiction books. I then have the free romanticy books and only one of these came from the library actually because I have Jasset Hair which I got via Illumicrate last year I believe so it's got these like really nice frayed edges. Oh here we go I still keep it in here it's uh, July 2023 is when I got it and yeah it's just really nice it's got this like pale gold kind of cover says every truth has its time I don't know if you could there you go you could don't know if you can see it but yeah super interested in this one I really hope I'm gonna love it it is kind of chunky um, it's very funny that the fiction books are the smaller books in this series so yeah that one I already own physically I also already owned physically Throne of the Fallen by Kerry Maniscalco I got this second hand actually from somebody who was selling it on but it is a special edition which I didn't know when I bought it um because they didn't sell it very much so that was a nice stroke of luck again it's quite a chunk I feel like this is like 500 pages or something yeah over 500 pages so chunky and then the last one I did get from the library um and it's not as big as I thought it was gonna be uh The Hanging City it's really not that bad size it is the smallest of the three books it is just over 300 pages so that's nice because the other two are quite chunky oh wow this person has wrote quite a lot of books i've never heard of them before but they've written a lot there's also a map in here let me let me show you i don't really get it it's like a, a bridge and then it kind of like shows a lot of stuff going down but yeah interesting it's also very floppy <laughs> nice and floppy this one is so yeah here they all are i'm excited to get to them uh i am gonna begin I think with the fiction books I'm gonna begin with Hello Beautiful because it's the one that has to go back to the library the soonest so I'm gonna try and get like a decent chunk into this one before I have to give it back and then like move to the audiobook essentially so yeah I will check in with you once I've read the first couple of chapters and I'll let you know my thoughts on it So I am here to do my first update and it is on Hello Beautiful. I am currently about 90 pages in at the moment so yeah around here and I don't know how I feel about it so far I've got to say. It's not bad to read don't get me wrong it's completely readable but I can't really say I'm that invested or interested in the characters. Like the viewpoints are split between three different people in here. We have Julia, who is the older sister in the family, who is very like sure about what she wants. She's very driven. We have her younger sister, who is like the next youngest in the family of four sisters, Sylvie, who is very much the opposite. And she's kind of a dreamer and she's a romantic. Uh, they, they got on really well, but they very much clash in terms of their values, I think. And then the third viewpoint is William, who is the uh, boyfriend, now husband, um, of Julia and we're seeing we, we see things initially more from William's point of view and then we see things also from Julia and Sylvie's and I've got to say I don't enjoy William's point of view like it's trying to make him into this like sympathetic character because he had this like 
this kind of upbringing where his parents didn't really love him and he really struggled to find his place and basically he just doesn't know what he wants to do with his life so he just kind of lets Julia make his decisions for him essentially which is, is not really great for a character arc and he's at this point now where he's trying to figure out what it is he wants to do and I know from the premise that there's going to be some kind of affair between him and Sylvie and I don't really like him that much. Sylvie is okay and Julia, I think that's my issue is that I just find all the characters kind of okay. It's very much this like family drama saga kind of thing like I like all the focus on the um the Padovano I think they're called, yeah the Padovano family. Uh, they're an Italian-American family and I like all like the stuff around that. I like how realistic it's being portrayed and I, I liked all like the, the the inner family dynamics kind of thing like all the stuff when it's just the sisters, the stuff that's about like the family and the stuff with the father and with the mother, that kind of stuff I am finding quite interesting but William's place in this book I don't like and I just find him hard to root for as a character like yes he can be kind of relatable in that kind of way that it's just like he doesn't really know what he wants to do and he's struggling to work out like his passions and if he even has any passions like he loves Julia but she's currently pregnant and he's just kind of like hadn't really thought seriously about what being a father would be like particularly for him given that his parents never really loved him and um, they never even came to his wedding that he doesn't really know what it is to be a father or how to love someone in the way that you need to to love a child so he's obviously just been kind of like just come along for the ride and now he's realizing how in deep he is and he's just like fuck so yeah it's okay i'm not massively invested in this i have to say like i say it's perfectly readable but i also very much feel like this is the kind of book that i read it and I'm probably gonna forget it very quickly afterwards. Like, I'm not massively far in, obviously. I'm like pff, a quarter, maybe. So things could pick up, but at the moment, it's just kind of fine. So yeah, that is my update so far. I unfortunately have to take the physical copy back to the library tomorrow because it has reserves on it. So I might try and get another like 50 pages or so in tonight, but I'm probably realistically not gonna get much further in. But I do have the audiobook on reserve and I should be getting that in a couple of days. So I'll be continuing this via the audio and I'm hoping I'll enjoy the audio. Um, I'm hoping, I don't know if it's going to be a full cast kind of thing or if it's just like one person. But I'm hoping the audio would be okay for me to carry this on because it can be mixed sometimes in terms of narrators. So yeah, that is my update so far. I don't get the audiobook for a little bit so it might be that I pick up yellow face and start that in the meantime whilst I'm waiting to pick up um, the remainder of this one so yeah that is the first update I'll check in again soon I guess and I just hope this picks up a little bit because I say it's not bad it's just not amazing at the moment I am failing to see how this is second place because this doesn't it's definitely fiction but it just feels like a typical family drama book that I could have picked up off the shelf anywhere <laughs> really so yeah that's my thoughts so far on Hello Beautiful. Okay so I have indeed taken my copy of Hello Beautiful back to the library unfortunately and I've got like a good 10 days or so until the audiobook comes in for me to carry it on. I've also re-reserved the physical copy so I might actually get it back before I finished it and kind of finished it physically but in the meantime I'm going to pick up the next book and that is Yellow Face. I feel like I don't need to explain what this is about but I'll read this synopsis anyway uh, just in case you have somehow missed this book but basically it is about this failed writer called June Hayward. She witnesses her rival Athena Lou die in a freak accident. She sees her opportunity and takes it. So what if it means stealing Athena's final manuscript? So what if it means borrowing her identity? And so what if the first lie is only the beginning? Finally, June has the fame she always deserved, but someone is about to expose her. What happens next is entirely everyone else's fault. <laughs> so yeah, this is kind of like a political commentary and a satire, I believe, basically a lot to do with uh, like race stealing, essentially, because it is a white author, I believe, who steals her Asian author's um, manuscript when the, she dies essentially and I believe she also presents herself as like an ambiguous identity which 
we've seen before so yeah um it's to do with that and i've heard nothing but good things about this i'm actually super excited to read it i think i'm probably gonna get through it really fast so yeah that is seal their face and i will check in once i've actually read some parts of it and i'm just hoping it's gonna be as um as scandalous and as wry as i think it's going to be Okay, so I wanted to check in because I am about midway through at the moment in yellow face and I am having the best time with this. I don't really know what I expected to be honest, but this is just such a fun read. Like this is basically like you've tuned in to your favourite reality TV show, but it's written really, really well. <laughs> It sounds like I'm like dissing it by likening it to a reality TV show, but like I'm a huge reality TV show fan, so to me that's not a diss. But just the whole way that it's like you're watching these things unfold, um, it's very relatable. A lot of the stuff that you're seeing, it's not relatable, but it's very realistic. It's very realistic, a lot of the things that you're seeing, and it is literally just like watching a train wreck, essentially. I'm having so much fun with this, even though I absolutely hate the main character. It's so interesting seeing things from her point of view and just how like hypocritical she is, like how ridiculous, how she's like the way she thinks, like it kind of, you can see how it makes sense to her, but you can also see exactly how wrong she is and she keeps like going back on herself and being like, oh yeah, this is bad and now she's like, oh, it's not so bad. But yeah, it's really interesting. I am honestly having a whale of a time with this. It's too early to call it a rating, I think, but I am I'm enjoying this so much. So I'm at the point now basically where she's had the book published, she's kind of done the publishing rounds and she's started being flamed on Twitter because of this mysterious Twitter account that's shown up that's basically saying that she stole the work from Athena. Um, and she's just worked out now who it is who's behind that, who is someone who she knows, who knows Athena. And she realises that, you know, he really could take her down, I suppose, because he is probably the only proof that she has, unless they go through Athena's old notebook, which are still her family's house, that the this story is not originally her own, even though she's kind of like, oh yeah, well, it's okay, because I've rewritten so much of it that there's like not even Athena's story anymore. She's like, oh yeah, and look at these bits that I wrote. These are the bits people like, and they're my bits. And how she's like edited out a lot of things that like, she was like, oh yeah, Athena's writing style doesn't really fit for this. And she was being all like trauma girl and this kind of stuff. Super interesting, honestly, seeing her editing process and he seeing how she was just kind of like, really pulling apart she pulls apart Athena a lot throughout this book but there's also this like weird thing that's kind of like she realizes she could have actually almost been best friends with Athena and Athena didn't have much in the way of friends and like it starts off and she's kind of like going on about how much she hates Athena but they have this like really nice moment and then Athena dies so from that point yeah it's interesting how she kind of tries to persuade herself that what she's doing is fine by then saying that you know it's okay because Athena's work needed help anyway and also Athena was just like stealing all this anyway from like other people yeah it's super interesting just enjoying it so much uh I, I had to just pause on a moment earlier today because I was laughing so much and basically she's at this like first event which I think is just before the launch or it's just after the launch and she's met like these three other authors who are kind of like famous in the publishing house and they're all like fully established authors and the descriptions of them is so funny. Okay so in my edition it's on page uh, 89 and she's at BookCon and she says oh I find myself in a circle with Daniela and three of her best-selling authors Marnie Kimball who's written best several bestsellers about a sexy blonde waitress fighting supernatural crime and romancing vampires in seedy bars. If that doesn't sound like true blood, I don't know what does. <laughs> what does it? Uh, then there's Jen Walker, who's just been on today's show to talk about her memoir about becoming a rich and powerful CEO before she turned 30. I don't know who she's based off of, but I'm sure there are multiple people that could be. And then finally, Heidi Steele, a severe and handsome romance novelist whose titles I've seen on Target Rex since I was a child. 
I'm going to assume Danielle's still here. So she's not subtle with a lot of these like allusions to other people in the industry. It's really, it's just so interesting seeing like all these like inside the publishing industry, seeing the critique of it, seeing how shallow a lot of people are within it. And like these like free writers end up becoming her like supporters, I suppose, like her only supporters really, because her family doesn't really understand what she's doing. And so like every time like things are like, as things are slowly getting worse and worse and worse for June, these three writers are kind of like in this group chat together and they're just like, it's okay June, just ignore the haters. But they are all so bitchy as well and they all come across so shallow and yeah, it's just super interesting. I have no idea where this is going. I don't know if she is going to be fully like, like it is going to be fully revealed to everybody that she did indeed steal Athena's work, but I'm just having the best time. Um, I'm probably going to end up finishing it like today or tomorrow or something because I'm loving it. So yeah, I'm loving it more than Hello Beautiful, unfortunately. But yeah, I just wanted to pop in to say that that's how that's going. So unfortunately I have absolutely nothing yellow in my closet, but to match this, but I finished yellow face just now. I am still formulating my thoughts on this. It was a ride. God, I don't even know what I'm going to rate it. I think it might be a five star. Honestly, like this was crazy and I think I loved it and I also think I didn't love it <laughs> like it's it's difficult because the funny thing is is that I was saying before about how much I was enjoying it I am I really enjoyed it at the same time this is an incredibly uncomfortable read obviously as well for someone who is white um I mean I'm half Greek but I I am white it puts so much, really like shines that magnifying glass onto racism, racial politics, that kind of thing. And yeah, I think it was really well done. It was so interesting to see it from Juniper's point of view. And oh, can I just say, Juniper song, delusion. That is, that perfectly sums up the main character in this book. The sheer amount of delusion she is under is ridiculous like even right towards the end when she is everything has happened and she's still trying to convince herself that she will make her way back from this and she'll she'll like vindicate herself which is so ridiculous yeah she was such an interesting character like i hated her but my god her thought processes were bonkers so yeah i really enjoyed this i can see why this won the fiction books awards for goodreads at this point in time i am a hundred or so pages into hello beautiful and for me i don't think it's a winner i have yet to start the wishing game so we'll see how i feel but right now i really am feeling like this is justifiably a winner i guess god i have so many thoughts it's like hard for me to formulate I, I probably need to like just go away for a couple of days let them sit and think about it i i don't tab books i wish i tabbed this honestly like it's a library book so it would have been a pain and i've had to have like taken out all the tabs again when i take it back but there was so many good lines so many good like takes and opinions and thoughts in this like there was just so much to take away from it um, I was reading the acknowledgements at the back as well and it was really interesting because Arif Kwan basically talked about how this is a horror story about loneliness in a fiercely competitive industry and I can see this. She basically says about how she has loads of really good friends whereas both June and Athena do not and yeah the loneliness is such a big thing because June literally has no one who gets her and Athena was probably the only person who if only sometimes they kind of did think alike and yeah so it really is this tale of loneliness and how june will just stop at nothing to make herself feel like she's important and validated and part of like this community which is like the only thing that she's holding on to basically so yeah it was really really good i have more thoughts let me try and uh, put them together in some kind of a meaningful way otherwise I'm just gonna be going on about 
how utterly insane this book was. I gotta say as well, all the focus on like social media and June's like addiction to social media, like honestly it made me want to take a social media break. It was so heavy. Like all the way through, like you're just trying to, you're just saying Juniper, like stop paying attention to it. It's not that important, but I, I for people like her, it is. And I, I get that, but I don't get that because to me, social media is not really a big thing. I, I'm, I post occasionally, like I do have a bookstagram account and that's probably the only thing I really post on. But I only really like talk to people through like messenger and in person. So I don't, I don't really get, I'm not into TikTok. I don't really post much on like twitter or instagram i have accounts but i don't really use them that much i can go like months sometimes between looking at like my twitter and that but i definitely can see the obsession and that scares me a little bit like the obsession that you can get with social media and yeah it, it puts me off the critique in this was so interesting as well because i enjoyed honestly that rf kwang not only was obviously critiquing the main character but she was critiquing everybody in this book. Like, she was critiquing Athena a lot, which is interesting because you can kind of see how Athena is based off herself. So it's almost inviting the reader to, like, critique R.F. Kwong herself. And, yeah, that's an interesting thing to do. Um, it, and it kind of makes me want to. Like, I've not read any other R.F. Kwong books, but it makes me want to look at her in a critical lens because of what she's done in this book which is not a takeaway i thought i was gonna get from this but it really does make you sort of examine how people are and god yeah the publishing industry is just so messy like it's a very jaded kind of way that you see the publishing industry in this that you see like the book community in this and other authors like there's very rarely any like good things you see like you occasionally see a good few things like there are some moments where like juniper very briefly like teaches a class and she gets really like, motivated and excited from it and she's like yeah i'd love to like train them into being the next writers and that was a nice positive moment and the next day it's completely undone because she sees a threat essentially from one of the students and she completely changes and she ruins everything and it's awful to watch her do that. Like, every time you think she's going to, like, do the right thing, she does the complete opposite and just gets herself even worse in the shit, basically. This is not a character examination. This is a character assassination of the main character. <laughs> so, yeah, I can very much see how this is a number one global sensation. I get the hype. I really do. At first, when I read this, I was like, I don't know if this book could ever reread. But then I think about how how well written some of these things are. And I'm like, damn, I would reread this. I, I would love to go through and just like tab it and annotate it and that kind of thing. Because yeah, there was just so much good stuff in here. I don't know how I feel about the ending. I think it worked. I was a bit like, I don't know where they're going to go with this. Something happened and I thought that maybe that was going to be the end. And that would have almost been like justice I suppose if what had happened had like stuck but the ending that we picked was really interesting and honestly like it really did just sum up how the character is completely again delusion so yeah that's my thoughts on yellow face I have a couple of days left before the audio book of hello beautiful will come to me uh, I'm waiting for it in borrow box at the moment so I'm probably gonna carry that on rather than starting something else because I want to be able to fully focus on it and I think I'm in between at the moment about whether I read The Wishing Game after Hella Beautiful or I might switch it up and I might actually start with Romanticy and pick up The Hanging City. This is probably the Romanticy that I'm the least like the most skeptical that I'm going to like mostly because I've heard literally no one talk about it and my whole thing for why I picked it was oh my god romanticy with trolls which is not the best way to pick a book I'll be honest so I think I'm yeah I think I might try this one after hello beautiful and yeah we'll go from there I will check in soon
<laughs> when you gotta scream, you gotta scream. <laughs> So I thought I'd give a quick update because I have started the wishing game. I wasn't keen on the beginning, I've got to say, but now we're starting to get into like the competition aspects of it and our main character is heading off to the island to take part in that. It is definitely getting more interesting. It just felt like it was a bit of a slow start to, bring it to begin with, to be honest. There was a lot of stuff with just kind of like Lucy and building that relationship between her and the kid who she wants to adopt and it felt a little bit heavy handed. The writing was a little bit squiggly to be honest, especially in terms of the dialogue. So I wasn't loving that. We also met this other character called Hugo who is the assistant of the author and we got to know a little bit about him but not too much to be honest. I think he's possibly going to be the main romance interest in this. Um, so yeah it wasn't a great start but I'm definitely interested in where it's going now. The whole competition aspect sounds so fun. So yeah I'll check in once I've got a bit further in. I'm about how much am I in at the moment? I am just hit page 90 at the moment on it so yeah not doing too bad. So another update, this time for Hello Beautiful. I am further in now. I have been carrying on with the audiobook because that finally became available. So I've been carrying on with the audiobook and not loving the narrator of the audiobook, I've got to say. I really don't like the way she tells the story. It's kind of lifeless, which is a real shame because I was fairly enjoying this book. Like I wasn't loving it, but I was liking it and I do like the writing style. But she is just like killing it with the characters like no one sounds interesting she's not really got much inflection it's very frustrating so yeah I, I have that to say I wish I still had the physical book to carry on with but I have kind of re-requested it but I don't think it's going to come in anytime soon so I am just going to have to kind of push on with the audiobook I have maybe about like five hours left maybe four hours left i think on it so we'll just see how that goes but i'm also and this is not because of the audio narrator um, i'm not enjoying where the, the direction of the story is going at this point now so william and sylvie have of course kind of hooked up at this point they've fallen in love the sisters are still kind of carrying on doing their own thing julia is living somewhere new york or something like that and she is doing okay but she's feeling very lonely because none of her sisters are with her. Um, we also had some nice surprise LGBT representation though because it turned out the youngest sister, Emmeline, um, is a lesbian and she only just realised this and they dealt with that fairly okay. Like there was, a, there was a little bit of a thing where it was just like, oh, but she doesn't look like a lesbian. But it, it moved over that okay at least and there was even a bit where Emmeline like told Julia and she was like oh none of the others were like genuinely happy for me everyone was a bit like taken aback and a bit scared at first so yeah I didn't expect to see that in there but I also have like was reading a little bit around the book and I heard someone talking about how this is kind of inspired by little women which means I know this is probably going to go down a tragic path for one of the sisters I've heard the c word mentioned I really hope it's not Emily and it's talking about because that would just suck in a major bury your gaze kind of way. So we'll see. I am feeling cautious going into the last half of this book because it's done the whole right these two are now in love. We've kind of had a bit of fallout but not a lot of fallout and I'm a little bit like I have no idea where this is going at this point. Like this, the plot is I don't know where it's going essentially. So I guess we'll see. Uh, I really hope this doesn't go down this really depressing tragic route 
as like this is how we're going to bring everyone back together again is because one of the sisters croaks it because I just I just don't enjoy that I don't enjoy the trauma and grief uh, brings people back together kind of thing because it doesn't deal with the initial problems of why they split apart it's just like oh well uh, you know obviously things are more important but also it feels like it kind of will ignore those initial ish problems so yeah I'm I'm not yeah I'm worried basically about where the remainder of this book is going I'm still interested enough to be carrying on like despite how bad the audio narrator is I'm still interested enough in the story I'm not going to DNF it I'm just worried about where the plot's going so yeah I guess I'll check in probably once I've finished it now and I'll let you know how it goes I feel like it's sitting around a three initially it had potential to be a four because I do like the writing and it had some moments that really did like get to me but I just I don't think it's even going to be a four star honestly so that's a shame but it is what it is. So I did indeed finish Hello Beautiful via the audiobook um as I think I said before I do not did not enjoy the audiobook experience for Hello Beautiful at all the narrator was just so clinical and robotic I couldn't get a sense of any of the characters and I've got to say, even though I did kind of like the first quarter third of this book, it really fell off for me in the last part, unfortunately. I just wasn't really interested in the plot. It kind of like did a lot of time skipping so that we were also focusing on the children. The child of Julia was also like another viewpoint in this. And she was okay, but it really started to get a little bit ham-fisted with the whole this is a little women book and it kept repeating that and then of course that meant that someone died yes it was the big c i wasn't happy about it it wasn't the person who i thought it was thank god so it didn't have a bury your gaze thing but i also didn't really like how it did what it did i felt it was very like it, it lingered on it and i thought it was going to really drag it out and then it, it just kind of happened and it was very quick and as they kind of expected it was like the catalyst to bring the family back together again and I don't like that as a trope so yeah I just didn't like that last half whatsoever um I was possibly like tentatively maybe gonna give this a four based off that first third but it's definitely gone down to a three for me unfortunately because that last half of the book just absolutely killed it for me I just didn't enjoy where the plot went I, no it wasn't for me unfortunately so yeah that was a shame I it just didn't work but I did however also finish The Wishing Game I read this in two days it was such a quick read it's not a very long book either I think it is the shortest of the three books possibly I think it's a little bit shorter than Yellow Face as they sit at about 300 pages. And I really liked this one. Um, I overall gave this a four star. A mid four, I'd say. I really liked, uh, it was the beginning for me that unfortunately did drop that rating down a little bit. I thought it was still kind of slow to get going. And I didn't necessarily like the way they did that beginning and the whole emphasis. Um, I thought it was a bit clumsy how they did the whole like interactions between Lucy and Christopher and that whole thing I just I thought was a little bit clumsy but it thankfully got a lot better um, once she left and had gone to the island to take part in the competition and I really liked it from there. Um, I enjoyed seeing the interactions between the characters. I was really happy um, to find out that thankfully like it wasn't like as cutthroat as I was expecting it to be like this was actually quite a cozy read even though it's about a competition but mostly because I was worried it was going to be like a uh, everyone hated each other in the competition everyone was out to get each other and apart from one person actually everyone was okay and like it did kind of justify why they'd been picked in the first place and why they were all people who Jack had chosen and who Jack cared for uh, Jack is the author um, and he invited them to the island and yeah I really enjoyed it I didn't hate the romance element again thankfully it was very light on the romance we didn't even get anything like too spicy and it was more about them getting to know one another having discussions with each other that kind of thing and I liked that yeah there was a lot of like interesting conversations to be had the actual competition elements were quite good they were not like super dangerous or anything like that but I think it did suit the theme of the book and also the whole theme in that these are kind of like games that kids would play and how it was kind of like 
reenacting one of these children's books but in real life and for an adult so yeah i quite enjoyed that and yeah overall i just had a good time with this it was very cozy i did like the ending a lot it very much did kind of go for that thing that it kind of says early on in that the thing you wish for is maybe not the thing that you need and i think lucy got what she needed at the end rather than what she initially wished for and it was better in the end for her than what she initially initially kind of had set out to do so yeah i really liked this i would probably pick up more books by this author if she writes more um like i said it wasn't quite a five star so that does mean that yellow face won the fiction category because um, i don't have the physical copies of the other two although i'm definitely buying my own copy of yellow face soon but the summary then is that we have hello beautiful at third place then we have the wishing game at second place because i gave us a four star and then right at the top we do in fact still have we do in fact have yellow face which did win the fiction category so it wasn't totally accurate in terms of the awards for me personally like i think hello beautiful was the runner-up and I just didn't really like it. It definitely had some good writing. It definitely had some bits that like really got me emotionally, which I wasn't really expecting going into it. But for me, it was just kind of a slightly above average family drama. And so for me, I don't know if it was necessarily worthy of being in this prize, but that's just my take on it but this I, I was a bit worried about this one because i was a bit like should this be in the fantasy category because i've heard people say it's magical realism but the magical realism elements are so limited i can see how this is in the fiction category so i do think it was in the right category i can't remember where this actually got in terms of the voting i'm just gonna go check that quickly oh it was third place so that isn't too bad again the distance in votes is insane yellow face with two hundred thousand votes it won by an absolute landslide because Hello Beautiful got 60,000 votes and Wishing Game wasn't far behind Hello Beautiful, 57,000 votes. So it was actually quite close between Hello Beautiful and The Wishing Game, but I would definitely put The Wishing Game above Hello Beautiful for me personally. In terms of the other books in here, I don't believe I've read any of them, but there are a couple that I would actually still quite like to read. I'd like to read Evil Eye, I'd like to read Burnham Wood, Shark Heart, Big Swiss, I think I do actually have possibly as an audiobook at the moment, The Invisible Hour, maybe Tom Lake. I don't think from what I've heard about it that it's my kind of thing, but I've heard a lot of praise for it, and that came forth. I might pick it up in the future, but for now at least, the results of the fiction awards for me is that I got a five star, a four star and a three star. The fact that I got a five star at all in this is a big win for me. And I finally read Yellow Face. So, and I'm, I'm glad it did in fact live up to the hype that it's been getting. So yeah, that is the fiction. Uh, I'm now going to begin on the Romanticy books. I was almost going to pick one of these up earlier. I almost decided to start Romanticy rather than picking up the wishing game um but because this was so short i just decided that i'd do all the fiction in one go and then i could fully like compare them to one another for romanticy i do have all three of the books here we've got the hanging city we've got the jasset hair and then we've got throne of the fallen i actually wasn't sure which one i was gonna start with this is the library book and these two are ones i actually own so i ended up doing a little poll on gavin reads all discord um to help me pick which one i was going to read and i didn't say what they were i just left emojis and you can see the result of the poll here um i was very sneaky because i almost put like a little like ogre shrek emoji in for the hanging city but then i thought that would be too obvious and there's a snake on the cover so i put a snake for that one i put a key for throne of the fallen which came second i believe and then i put a crown for the jasset hair because there wasn't anything that looked really egyptian like and this has hair in the title so i was like a crown will do um and that came last and then throne of the fallen and then the hanging city won so that means i am going to be starting with the hanging city which is interesting because it's the one that i picked purely because i was intrigued by it just the fact of it being trolls i think is so unusual for a romanticy um it is also the shortest it is just over 300 pages much like the wishing game so i do anticipate this being a fairly quick read and it's one i've heard no one talking about so i'm very interested what that means basically like it was obviously liked enough to get into the romanticy 
like top 10. I think it got into the top 10 anyway. Yes, it is actually number 10, I believe. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is number eight. So it did make it into the top 10. Jasset Hair was number 10. So Jasset Hair actually did worse than this one. But there's, there's not a lot of like difference between the votes in these three books. So we're starting with the one that actually came middle. And then I'll probably go into Throne of the Fallen, which did better than this one. And then I'll go to the one that did the worst. The worst. It's still 10th place um, with the jacid hair. So I guess I'll check in with you once I've actually started to read The Hanging City and have an update about it. Hello. So I thought I'd give a quick update uh, before I head off to work for today because I ended up actually starting Throne of the Fallen yesterday rather than Hanging City just because I have the audiobook for it and I was going out for like a long walk. So I figured I'd just get started on this and I really like this so far, shockingly. I am super into it. I am just really wanting to read nothing but this right now and the audiobook is really good. Uh, I'm not far in. I am maybe about three or four chapters so far, but I'm really liking it. So yeah, nothing but good updates so far from this. It's obviously chonker, so we'll see how it goes. At the moment, I am just having a great time with this, which is a relief because this is the chonkiest of the romantic And yeah, so I'm glad I'm actually liking it. But yeah, highly recommend the audiobook for it. Both of the narrators are really good. Okay, so I'm giving you another quick update of Throne of the Fallen. I am about halfway through, I think, at the moment, and I'm absolutely devouring this. I am having such a good time. I really didn't know if it was going to be, like, my kind of thing, but honestly, loving it. Like, I, I like the main girl so much. Um, and the story's been super interesting. Take a shot every time they say the word cock, I guess. But I am definitely having a really good time with this. It might even be a five star. We'll see, because I still have half a way to go. But at the moment, it's been doing all this like high society stuff. And now Camilla and Envy are in the underworld. And they're both taking part in this game kind of thing. So yeah, honestly, I'm just loving this so much. I think the only complaint I have is that I feel like maybe... I am missing a few bits from not having read Kingdom of the Wicked series because that's to do with Raph, I believe, who has actually just showed up briefly. And I think I'm just missing a few bits like to do with what the game is about. Like it's been a little bit vague. Like we know it's held by some kind of fae. We know that if you win, you get some sort of big reward or you get a wish or something and like Envy is doing it because um, his kingdom is like falling apart and he's trying to hide it. Um, but he needs, like, something big, basically, to save his kingdom. But I'm still a little bit, like, vague on what the whole deal is with the game. Like, what they're supposed to do, that kind of thing. It's not really been spelled out. So that's probably my only complaint so far about this. But otherwise, I'm totally loving it. Um, I actually, like, took a break and read something else halfway through. Because I felt like I was so into it. I was just going to get through it too fast. And I wanted to kind of take my time with it. And the fact that I'm, like, I don't want it to end is a good sign that it might be a five star because I'm like so into it I'm like oh I'm gonna be sad when I finish it so yeah only good things really with this update I'm very happy that my first romantic book that I've read for this video has actually been super good so far it does give me hope for the other two that I'm reading so yeah I hope next time I check in it'll probably be once I've finished at the moment I'm very much just going back and forth between the audiobook and reading it physically I'm enjoying both both ways basically because the audiobook is really good so yeah I will update you again probably once I finish. So it's been a while since I've updated it's actually been a couple of days since I finished Throne of the Fallen but I wasn't very well so I ended up just not being able to record for a little bit uh, but I'm finally feeling a bit better today so I can come at you with my review of Throne of the Fallen and I gave this a five star I really liked this I feel like, uh, so here's how I go about with my five stars. For me, five stars are purely emotional. And a lot of five stars, if I had to be kind of like objective about it, they would probably be four stars. So um, Fourth Wing, for example, I gave that a five star. It's probably more realistically a four star, but I loved it so much that it, I just had to give it a five star essentially because I just had such a good time with it. And that is very much how I feel about Throne of the Fallen. In the same kind of vein, I'm like, is this the best written book ever? No. Did I have a great time with it and did not want to finish it? Yes. 
so that's a very good start to my romanticy uh section i suppose i don't really want to say too much more about the plot in terms of spoilers but i was very happy about where the plot went i did find the main guy to be kind of frustrating at times but i love the main girl i love the world building i did like the twist that came near the end and i like that we're going to be carrying on within this world in the next book i believe we're going to be following because these are all like princes of sin so i believe we're following greed is the next one who mysteriously was absent for most of the book um but mentioned every so often so that kind of like was throwing the breadcrumbs around but honestly like it felt like any of these people in here could have easily had a whole book written about them it really did give me um back in my like late teens early 20s i was super into the dark hunter series by cheryl and kenyon and honestly the vibes of the world building and how like all these people are interconnected and how obviously we're going to be following other people within the family is such a dark hunter vibe to me it actually made me really nostalgic to go back to that series so yeah i can happily say that i really enjoyed this one in the romanticy books so i am now going to actually pick up the one that i was supposed to have read first um for the poll which is the hanging city uh, i figure this is like the shortest of the three i think it is around 300 pages so i think i'll go to that one before picking up the one that is much chunkier which is the jacid hair Okay, a very quick update. Uh, I'm not looking too great right now. I don't have makeup on, so I'm not going to be on camera. But I am uh, about just over 100 pages in on chapter 10. And I'm actually not minding this so far. The world building is really interesting. Our main character is a choice. I don't love her. Uh, basically, she's just this girl who has run away partially i assume because she has this power um that she can call upon that basically incites fear in others and she used that to get into the troll community um because they think she can use it basically to help hunting monsters but there's not really a lot to her otherwise to be honest she's just doing her best to fit in and she has got on quite well with these two trolls that are kind of supposed to be looking out for her that she's working with um she got lucky really because she got two that i guess are fairly chill compared to some of the other trolls and it looks like there's possibly going to be a romance between her and this half troll guy who is struggling to like raise in the ranks and he's kind of like uh, suffers a lot of a uh, racism and stigmatism um because he is half troll half human not really a lot to say about him to be honest at the moment we don't really know very much about him they've had a couple of conversations and she's like i care for him and i don't quite get why because we don't really know much about him other than his sad backstory right now but yeah it's okay i'm liking it i'm not loving it and i guess i'll check in once i have read a little bit more also just a random observation here but like 
I really like the cover of this book, but certain things about it really confuse me. Like, obviously, we've got the drawbridge and going down to the sea. That's fine. The spider is Lark because she said before that that's kind of like her constellation. I don't get what the purple fruit and stuff is because it doesn't look like any of the food that they eat. And then I don't get what the deals with the snake, like at all. Because there's some like monsters that I guess are snakes, but like, it's not really a massive part of the book. So, yeah, I don't know, J just an observation. Cool cover, but yeah, I, I don't think it necessarily suits the book completely. Okay. This is a super quick update on The Hanging City. Um, I'm actually just about to head out to an author event. It's a conversation uh, with Julie Armfield, author of Our Wives Under the Sea, for her new book, Private Rights. I haven't actually read it yet, but I love this book. So really excited for that. I've gone for a, I don't know what this is, a green and pink theme wearing my new scream earrings because i love them but i am further in the hanging city i'm gonna take it with me and i might end up finishing it on the way there or way back i'm about two just over 200 pages now into this so decently far in and i have great news and that is because <laughs> it looked like she's fallen for an actual troll not the half troll the full troll. I was actually very happy about because also the storyline with her and I've forgotten his name to be honest. Wow it doesn't even list his name on the back that's actually insane. Uh, Asmar is his name. Uh, he is the sister of the woman who was sort of supposed to be looking after her and he's basically just been really kind to her and looking after her and it is now very obvious that he has feelings for her and she has feelings for him but different races lots of issues it's not going to turn out well i guess uh but i am very relieved because i like his character a lot more we know a lot more about him we feel emotion emotionally more close to him than we do really compared to perg who i thought is who they were gonna really be pushing the romance angle with perg was the the half troll half human guy but it looks like they're just friends thankfully not crazy about a lot of the decisions she's making i think she's being very naive particularly with regards to some humans that have been like trying to spy on the place she's trying to help them and i just I think it's gonna end in trouble basically i don't see how this could end happily at this point but i guess we'll see um short of her running away with asma which i don't know if he wants to do either and she is actually getting like quite attached to the place that she's in now in the troll city she's finding like a place there but her powers are potentially messing things up also this other troll who she used the powers on is out to get her so that is also like a thing that's happening but yeah basically um i was like joking to my friend the other night um the author's gonna chicken out and not go for like a full troll romance and just have her with like the half troll guy who's like very much human looking and i'm so glad that didn't take the cowards route out and we are going for a full troll romance i'm like if you're gonna do it do it <laughs> so i'm glad they are indeed doing it otherwise not a lot else to say about this to be honest it feels a bit ya to be honest in terms of the writing i am still enjoying it but i'm also kind of ready to be for it to be done at this point i'm glad this is a shorter book i'm just not necessarily invested enough in this one but it's definitely not bad and i i don't mind it so yeah i've got about 100 pages left i should be updating you once i've finished i guess with my final review at the moment it's feeling like a free star Okay, uh, I am reading more of Hanging City. I only have like about three or four chapters left, I think. But I just had to update because it was the funniest thing that basically our main girl, Lark, was like trying to escape from some humans and she made out that she was having her period because it put them off so much that they wouldn't like 
guard her that well so that was a funny moment that I wasn't expecting. So I just managed to finish The Hanging City and it was just okay. I found the conclusion to be kind of unsatisfying to be honest. It felt like there was a lot of build up and then it didn't really feel like the end results. Uh, I just didn't, yeah, it felt a little bit of a letdown with the end. Like it spent so long building up this troll city and then it kind of just didn't seem that important. At the very end with the decisions that Lark and Asma made, I guess it was a positive ending, but I don't know. I just found it to be dissatisfying and I felt the resolution of like the war was quite dissatisfying as well. Basically, there was a war going on between the humans and the Trollus at the time. Um, I did like what Lark did though. Lark used her powers in probably the only creative way that she's done. Um, throughout the whole book so brownie points to her for that I guess but overall this was just fine it wasn't amazing or anything I certainly didn't like it as much of Throne of the Fallen but it was an easy read to be honest I don't think it's a book I'm really going to remember that much but it was okay I really did enjoy the world building I do appreciate that the author really did go full with, yes, we are having a troll human romance. I didn't love the romance, but I did like Asmar as a character. And I did like some of the other characters as well. I thought his sister Unak was a really interesting character as well. But yeah, it just felt that was like a lot of like threads that didn't necessarily get sorted out. And yeah, it, it kind of felt like it was going to continue at the end there into something else but I think this is just standalone so it probably isn't and I just didn't find the ending great basically so that's that one I am giving it a three so that definitely makes it sit below throne of the fallen and fourth wing but um it does set it higher than assistant to the villain so I'm now going to go on to my last book which is the jasset hair I'm hoping I like it Hello, so this is just the quickest of updates before I head out to an event for the meetup group that I help run. I really tried to read Jas and Hair. I pushed myself through two chapters and I just have to DNF this. Something about the writing, it's really like stilted and awkward and I was just really conscious of it and I just could not get into this. Uh, something about the writing, the flow, yeah it i just didn't like it a lot of the dialogue felt very like cheesy and i just didn't think the flow was very good so i rarely ever dnf stuff as early as two chapters in but i could just tell that i was just gonna really struggle with this so i'm making the executive decision to drop this and instead i'm going to go into the library before i head to my event today and they have a copy of the foxglove king so i'm gonna pick that up and i'm gonna try and read that instead i think that was um one of the close contenders I think it was in between that and slaying the vampire conqueror or something. I think I might hopefully like Foxglove King more. It feels like more kind of my kind of thing. So yeah, DNFing this. If I had to rate it, I don't know. I'm literally only two chapters in. Two star, I suppose. I just couldn't like it. So yeah, that is my update. I will check in once I've got the Foxglove King and hopefully I'll like it more. <laughs> So just a quick update, I only managed to read a couple of chapters today uh, before I had that event and me and a friend had dinner together and we ended up watching X because I want to go see Maxine soon so and she'd never seen X so I was like let's just put it on, it's like a fun slasher kind of movie. So I've managed to read three chapters so far of Fox Glove King and thankfully I'm liking it more. Um, it's nothing amazing so far to be honest, it's just very kind of typical sort of fantasy opening I think but the writing is fine so I think I'm gonna be able to at least carry this one on. Nothing really to report on it so far. I think 
The magic system is quite interesting. I'm interested to hear more about it. And it sounds like the plot is going somewhere interesting. So yeah, that's it so far. That's the update. I will check in once I've actually read a more decent chunk of Fox the King, I guess. But yeah, thankfully, I can definitely read this one unlike Jas and her. <laughs> Hello, another off-camera update. Uh, I am now five chapters into Foxcliffe King, but I actually have a whole lot of chores I want to do today. I've got a lot of cleaning to do, and I also want to try and reorganise my TBR bookcase. This is my TBR bookcase. Everything apart from the books up to Book Thief here or all the books I haven't read yet. This is like the books that I have read. I'm finally starting to like move into this bookcase now as I'm moving stuff out of the TBR and into actual red books. But it's gotten very messy recently ever since Cimera and I kind of want to organise it a little bit so that I've got things a little bit more easy for me to find when I'm picking books out. I also kind of want to do like a sprayed edge shelf here because I have so many nice sprayed edge books from special editions and I kind of like to display them that way. So I am actually purchased the audio book of Fox Glove King and I'm going to be listening to it today whilst I get on with sorting out my shelves and doing cleaning. Uh, don't mind the fact that I've got like a half styled wig over here. I'm cosplaying uh, from Twisted Wonderland soon, so that's kind of a thing. I really do want to also reshelve my main bookcase soon. I'm not loving how it is at current with it being via author, so I think I'm going to do genre instead. But that is a much bigger task that I don't have the energy for today. So today's task is TBR shelves. So that's the plan for today. Okay, so we are done with reshelving my TBR. Um, I have double stacked at the top here because the books at the very back are all like really long series that I'm not getting to anytime soon or they're like I'm reading whole series projects I've got planned so they're not something I'm going to reach for until I'm doing that project so I put those at the back and yeah everything else is nicely put away now. I've managed to have all my hardbacks in the shelves and then it's just kind of all the paperbacks are kind of um, either piled on the top where there's a little bit of space or they are at the very top here. So I still don't really have space for more books which is good because I'm not supposed to buy any more books um, but it looks a lot neater so I need to put all my like little paraphernalia bits back on but yeah I'm pretty happy with the overall look now I think it looks a lot neater it looks a lot neater so yep and the final look I've gone and put my stuff back on I've actually put less stuff on and I've got rid of the fairy lights because they were getting kind of old and I actually want to redo all my fairy lights and get some nicer ones the look of the TBR shelves that will get dark with another time <laughs> Here's my dice tray and let's roll to see how lucky it is. Uh, that's a natural 20! Hello, a quick update because I realise I have been actually reading quite a bit of this. I am like 21 chapters through and I really haven't given much updates in terms of how I'm finding it. It's okay. I'm... I'm liking it more than I did like Hanging City. I think we have a better protagonist. I think the characters in general are just more interesting, but I can't really say I'm like super invested in any of them. But so far, the romance has actually been quite limited. It looks like it's gearing up to be like a triangle between our main girl, Law, 
this priest guy who is a former noble who she's kind of working with on this spy mission and the prince who is who she's supposed to be spying on and I feel like the, the trio are gonna have to kind of work together basically but yeah it's very much just a lot of court intrigue at the moment and it's all right yeah I'm I'm interested I'm having a fine time reading it it's perfectly readable but I'm not loving it so we'll see how it goes. I am, I say, like around the halfway point. It might pick up a, bit, a little bit more towards the end. But so far, it feels like we're just kind of like following a lot of threads that aren't, we're not really getting any answers at the moment. And it, we're just kind of like building stuff up slowly. So yeah, that's it so far. I'll probably update you maybe when I'm done at this point because I'm actually reading it quite fast, thankfully. Hello. So this is the final update because I did finish The Fox Club King today by Hannah Witten. It was all right. I think overall I'm giving this a free, probably a lowish free, but higher than Hanging City, I think. I think Hanging City was definitely nowhere near as well developed as Foxglove King. There was a lot more going on with this one. The writing I think was better as well. The main character was better. But I honestly just kind of lost interest about halfway through with this one. I thought the first half was fine. It had a good like setup. I did like our main character lore. But honestly for me it was it was the the two guys in this which kind of killed it for me. Like there was evidently some kind of love triangle thing going on which honestly for a romance the romance wasn't massive in this book but I just found the two men to be so frustrating. Like, they were just behaving like man-childs for a good portion of the book. There was so much dick waving going on like basically these two are kind of like a history together and they used to be good friends but now they're kind of I guess rivals in some way but also just very different in terms of like their personalities and their values and stuff and yeah every encounter with them just so much time was just eating up with those two just sniping at each other and then sniping around Laura as well and honestly I just hated both of them by the end of the book. Of the two I guess what's his name Bastian the Sun Prince is probably came out of this the better because Gabriel yeah his arc was not great so we did finish off in kind of an interesting way but I, I'm not going to be carrying on the series I just honestly do not have enough interest in these characters or in this world to carry on so yeah it definitely wasn't bad I can really see how this is something that people would love so I'm giving it free also because of that I think because like it wasn't really my kind of thing but I can really see how it would like people would love this essentially like, I know the sequel I think has recently come out i want to say it's called the hemlock king or something but i don't remember here it is and there's going to be another book coming out at some point or another but yeah i think ultimately it was just fine it really wasn't for me unfortunately so yeah i feel like i, I should have more thoughts about this but honestly i felt like i really wasn't paying attention for the last half of the book i just completely lost all interest which is a shame, but it is what it is. For a romanticy, um, this was really not that spicy. Like compared to some of the other books that I read for this, like there was minimum spice. There was like two kisses, I think, and one like spicy kiss, I guess you can call it. But there really wasn't a whole lot in terms of that, which I didn't hate. But I also wasn't incredibly interested in a lot of political intrigue in this. Like the whole thing is kind of set in like this like Versailles style court essentially, which is of course extremely decadent and opulent and everyone is is drinking and doing drugs and ingesting poison and all this kind of stuff. Which got a little bit boring in terms of what we see of the other characters, I suppose. Like, I think there was one other character who was called Allie or something, and that she was interesting. I wanted to see more of her, but she really wasn't important in terms of the plot. Unfortunately, like I really thought there was going to be more of a plot to do with her, but she was really just kind of there to serve as like extra tension with Gabriel and to sort of give law like some kind of female companionship because she was obviously sorely lacking in this book but yeah honestly I liked the women in this book all the men were just a loss essentially old men doing horrible things young men doing stupid things so yeah that's my review of this I guess
So I can finally actually compile all those romantic books together. It's kind of ridiculous because I've ended up actually having quite a stack for this one, even though I only had three for the fiction. So obviously these are the books in total for the romantic that I kind of looked at, not necessarily finished. But if I had to rate them from lowest to top, let me see. Okay, so right at the bottom, it would be Assistant to the Villain that I previously read. This was the runner-up in the Goodreads Challenge. I gave this a two star. This did not work for me. I thought the plot was bad. I didn't like the romance. Some of the humour was fine, but this was just a big old letdown for me, unfortunately. I guess I should count the just hair, even though I DNF'd it. Yeah, the writing just did not work for me whatsoever. So as much as I really wanted to give this one a chance, I just could not push myself to get through this. So this should probably actually be at the bottom, to be honest, because obviously, yeah, I, I didn't end up like finishing it or reading much of it at all, to be honest. I guess that is the better rating. Next we have hanging city it was just okay i feel like it could have done more than what it did and ultimately it was just something that would be very forgettable it was just very mid in all senses of the word unfortunately so yeah this was a low free yeah it's not a two it's definitely not as bad as i had i didn't have as bad a time as this into the villain and it was an easy read honestly but yeah not one I would ever go back to and one i'm pretty sure i would forget everything about and yeah in terms of the romance it was just okay, essentially. I commend the author for actually committing to doing a troll human romance, but otherwise, not a lot else to recommend about this one. Then we are going with Foxglove King. Definitely had some interesting concepts, had a lot of politics, had a lot of world building stuff going on, did like our main character Law, but honestly, everyone else around her was a disappointment. And I think that just killed the book for me, unfortunately. You really have to like the two guys in this, I think, to love this book, and I just didn't. So yeah, this got a low to mid free, I want to say. If I hadn't have totally lost interest, I would say this would be a solid free, but honestly, because I just didn't care what happened in the last half of this book, it's sitting more at a low free, but definitely still higher than Hanging City, because I think the writing was better. I think the characters were more developed and there was definitely a better plot that went from all the way through this book whereas I thought the ending was very disappointing in The Hanging City. And then we have the last two books which are actually my five stars and honestly I don't know how to rate these. I really think that Four Fingers Next. This obviously was the winner of the Goodreads Awards. I read this last year, I think, really loved it, did give it a five star, but it is one of those five stars that I feel like is because you had such a good time of it. It's not necessarily the most, the best written book ever, but it's a lot of fun. And I did like the romance, but the reason why, for me, Throne of the Fallen is the winner, is that I just loved the main character so much and this Camilla I adored her I loved pretty much everything that was in this book he had really good spice scenes as well which I wouldn't usually comment on but this is romantic so I feel like I should I love the writing I thought the audio but narration was really good as well and it was just really solid and it's a series that I would happily read more in this world I'm definitely gonna pick up the Kingdom of the Wicked series and like I've had Iron Flame since it came out i've still not read it and i think for that alone that means that for me throne of the fallen has to be the winner because i'm dying to read more of this and the fact that i was pushing myself to read slower because i didn't want to finish it i didn't want to leave this world and these characters means that it has to be my top so that is what we have from top to bottom. So comparing this with the fiction books then, obviously there's not as good of a comparison in this because I've read more books for the romantic. I hadn't read any other books in the fiction category and I think that just goes to like my own personal tastes because I will read anything more fantasy and I won't necessarily go for a fiction book. But I actually had a good time with the fiction book awards. Like I have the three books that I read, Hello Beautiful was obviously the bottom one in that it was like a low free. And that again was a case of I didn't connect with the characters. I didn't think the plot was particularly interesting but I really did like some of the writing at times and it actually did get me emotional at a couple of moments. 
which I can't say any of these romantic books that I like rated the same kind of rating did and then I got a four star with a wishing game and a five star with yellow face so if I had to do the averages I worked this out of the romantic books it averages out at a 3.6 overall, not counting just hair because it was a DNF. If I had to rate it, then it'd probably be a, a 2, just based off the little bit I read. But because I didn't rate it, I didn't include it in my average because I think it just well, it wasn't fair. But fiction-wise, my average rating was a 4. So I think if we're talking about ratings, then fiction is actually the winner for me. So let me just grab what is essentially the two books that ended up being my all-time favourites from both. I loved both of these books so much, like I managed to, I'm really happy I managed to get some five stars in this project because that's part of what I wanted to do as well. Like I hope, I wanted to see if these books that are in the Goodreads Awards are really worth being there essentially. And while there were definitely some misses, for sure like I still managed to get some five stars from doing this project like both of these like this was a book that I had hoped would be a five star and I'm glad it was and this was a book I I didn't really expect a whole lot from it I was hoping I'd like it but the premise alone didn't necessarily like get me in the mindset of oh I'm going to love this because it sounds like any other romantic out there and I think that is the issue with the romantic category is that so much of them are similar. It doesn't help that a lot of the category is dominated by the same authors like Jennifer L. Armandrew, Carissa Borbrent. Fiction is a lot more diverse, obviously, but I had a better time with romantic than I was expecting to, which was a nice surprise because I was partially dreading it because yes, I love fantasy, but romance is so subjective for me. And honestly, I think it's the kind of the same with fiction because I am very subjective with the fiction so stuff like Hello Beautiful did not work for me but then we had Wishing Game, we had Yellow Face and I loved them. So I don't know what I would say is the winner from this category because if I had to put these two books together I liked Throne of the Fallen more which would technically make it the winner but if we're going by ratings alone fiction did win and I feel like all the of, of the other big books that's in this category for fiction there's a higher chance of me liking them more than a lot of what was in the romantic books because of the six I think romantic books that I at least tried during this video three of them were misses Jasset Hara I didn't finish Hanging City and he wanted to say the Hemlock King sorry um the Foxglove King both of them were kind of misses for me so yeah it, it's hard to say which one of them I think has won this battle. Like, I want to say Romantic because I love this book so much, but if we're going by ratings, it's fiction. I think we're going to have to say fiction. Honestly, like, even though fantasy has my heart and it always will, I actually really enjoyed reading a genre that maybe I don't read as much anymore. And, like, this is not a genre I would normally pick up at all with Yellow Face, but it was so good. It was so ironic. It was just so tense. And I feel like romantic. I have at least more potential to like anyway, so I have to be objective. Yeah, I think fiction won. And I do still want to read other books from this category as well. Um, I still want to read stuff from the romantic category, but less, I think, from the fiction category. So yeah, I guess that is it really. I have already been starting on the next part of this project where I am reading, I believe it's history and biography I think. This is YA fiction and uh, because of just how library holds went I'm actually almost done with that as well so it shouldn't actually be too long after this video goes live that the next part will be coming out. You'll have to wait longer for the third part but there shouldn't be too big of a gap. So yeah, those are my overall thoughts from this. I actually had a really good time. It's been nice to read books that maybe I wouldn't necessarily have picked to find some new favourites. Like it was nice to get validation that certain books that I was hoping um, would be like a, a five star for me, were a five star. You know, I found some favourites. I still don't know what kind of romantic books I like, but I'm glad I got a chance to try a couple that I feel have been floating around for a while and just worked out 
if they were my thing or not and yeah i think from what i've learned from this is that i should just try more fiction and i should try more genres that maybe i don't normally go for so yeah i had a good time uh, i hope you enjoyed this i'm aware this is probably ridiculously long feel free to put down below um which do you think was your favorite of the books that I read during this. Like, do you think I'm right? Do you think that fiction did beat romantic? Do you think romantic actually was the winner in this? Please let me know because I'm still a little bit like, I don't know. Like, it was actually really close, which was surprising because I didn't think it was going to be that close in terms of like my enjoyment level of each of the genres. So, yeah, that is it for this video. Look out for the next one coming out very soon. And as always, stay safe, stay cozy, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.